Hello once again, everybody. This is, I'm going to guess, about my sixth or seventh home theater video. But one of the reasons I'm shooting it is because I am finally got everything set up as I envisioned it in the house that my wife and I just moved into about ten months ago. So uh, this is kind of my uh, probably final version of this. And I enjoy watching these videos. I think anybody in this hobby kind of likes seeing what other people do. It might give them some ideas for the future. This is just a TV screen and the other part of my basement. Um, that is my component rack in a back room behind the theater. It's a Marantz AV8802 uh, pre um, processor on the top there. I've got some um, a CD burner three different amplifiers. It's a five channel Rotel on the bottom there. Um, a two channel Carver, or I'm sorry, four channel Carver and a two channel BNK. I know uh, mixing amplifiers is, might not be um, something that everybody would think is an okay thing to do, but in my case, I'm not concerned about it. I like bang for the buck and I got all those used at a steep discount and they all worked perfectly fine when I got them and all these years later still are so I don't think I could have done this system as is if I bought everything new and paid you know retailer close to it so that's that TV screen and then this is the entrance into the theater it's got the double doors it's uh, the builder built this so there's no special sound deadening insulation inside the walls or anything like that. And I designed this room with two channel being my priority. Don't get me wrong, movies sound really good in here, but two channel has is, is always been my, my priority. And uh, not to beat a dead horse about these aerial acoustic speakers, I've spoken about them before, but they are really, really, really good sounding speakers. I just said really three times, so if you're ever at a, and I have an opportunity to, to listen to these at a dealership or a show or any aerial acoustics at all, they just came out with the five T's, which are a, a bookshelf version of these. Do yourself a favor. They're, they're really good. I. Uh, Bought them used, got them like three thousand dollars off MSRP, or actually a little bit more than three grand off. Never having heard them, but they got so many great write-ups. I decided to take a chance, and I'm really glad I did. I figured if I didn't like them, I could turn around and resell them. But I've had these about, uh, I want to say, a little over two years now, and I'm be keeping these. I don't see these going anywhere. I blew my two smaller Martin Logan subs back into the corners. I have one on the left and the right of the screen in the corners. Up here, these are the smaller depth eye with the three eight inch drivers. All, all this model line were uh, sealed and servo controlled, which I like. It just, to me, and it gives you a little bit more control in the room. Maybe I'm full of crap, but that's just, I really like them. That's my take on it. Bought this Macintosh amp used some years back. Again, saved a couple grand off uh, MSRP buying it used. It's an aerial acoustic center channel speaker. They don't have a matching one to the 70s, but I guess it's in the works. Uh, aerial is a very small company and they don't have some huge R&D department like some of the big boys do, so it takes them a while to uh, come out with a new model, but when they do, it's, it's, it's right. And uh, that's my Oppo BDP-105 up on top and my Sony HAPZ-1 ES, a networked um, audio player down below there. It takes anything and up converts it to DSD. I don't know how much of a differ that difference that makes, but I think it's a very good sounding piece of gear too. I don't have the D version, the Darby version of the Oppo. I have a Darby between my um, Marantz and my projector, so everything that feeds up into that projector goes through that Darby enhancer. There's the other little ML sub back there. Got MIT shotgun speaker cables that I also got at a very good discount, um, over 50% off. Uh, some people say a coat hanger is just as good, and God bless you, but I don't subscribe to that notion at all. 
And I'm not going to do any double blind tests or anything like that. Sorry, I don't feel the need to. If I want to spend what some people consider an absorbent amount of money on wire, then it's my bank account, right? These are a couple of absorbers I just put up. I have the same one on each wall at the first point of reflection. They're a little bit more expensive than your standard one of the mill ones because of the custom images on them, but to me, I didn't spend a lot of money on aesthetics in this room, so I didn't mind with those paying a little bit more than the run of the mill ones. And I have got the old wall washer sconces. I have four of those up, two in the front of the room, two in the back, kind of like an Art Deco look to them. And I have the absorption panels up here as well. I don't know how well you can see them in this light, or lack thereof. And these walls look very gray through my screen. I think they do on the um, on your screen as well. They're more of a gray down blue, the walls are, but it's kind of hard to tell with the lighting in here. Not like that really makes much of a difference, but it's a 120 inch 16 9 screen that I got through Amazon. Uh, silver ticket, under 300 bucks delivered, and to me, performance wise, it's fine. I know a lot of people do the uh, dedicated theaters where everything's hidden, acoustical transparent screens and speakers behind walls. Some of them are rather just kind of plain Jane and others are extremely opulent with uh, themes and everything and those are wonderful. I mean I, I'd love to see one of those types of rooms, even some of the plainer ones. I don't have any friends or anybody who know anybody who has a room like that but um, it's just again not what I was going for in here obviously <laughs> I have Atmos speakers up I've got four of them had a little trouble deciding where to put them with the multiple rows of chairs so I settled on about seven feet in front of the um, main seats and then about three feet behind the back seats and there those speakers are Martin Logan ML 67s they're actually um, angled inside the baffles so they don't point straight down, they're angled towards the seat. So I don't know if that helps with Atmos or not. Atmos is still, to me, I don't know. It's, it's cool and everything. I haven't, I've got a few Atmos movies. I just got that on uh, my 8802 recently, so I haven't had a lot of time to sit down and really dig into Atmos. But um, so what, what I've heard of it so far, I think it's pretty cool. But I need to spend more time with it to really know how much of an advantage there is with it. Um, those are aerial acoustic side speakers flanking my front row. As I've mentioned, I'm still a music fanatic. I'm glad I saved my old vinyl because I just picked, recently picked up that um, linear tracking turntable from a, a local vintage store down here in the Akron area. and. Uh, Works real well, sounds real good. I've got my uh, Hi-Fi Man headphones with a little uh, tube amp that they run off down there for when I just want to do some more intimate listening, I guess is the way you would say that. And these are all, you know, power reclining seats. I got three in the front row and four in the back. They don't make this particular model anymore, so in the back row I went with something that at least looks similar. They're not exact, but I'm not extremely picky when it comes to that stuff. And they're sitting on this riser that I built myself. Um, I put LED strips above, right underneath, there's a little lip that hangs out over those mirrors so the LEDs are hidden down there and just reflect off of there. Just give you a little bit of perspective on how much room are between the rows. They're kind of close together. Another side speaker. And I used to run all definitive technology speakers and I uh, still like them, I th still think they're good speakers but again with the focus on music um, I just think the aerials are a couple notches above these at the least, I'll, I won't say them that they're not like you know, $50,000 Ravels or anything like that but they sound really good And this is uh, just a touch screen that's hooked up to that, um, 
to that um, Sony player up front. This actually has, uh, um, it's running a uh, an Android app right now. That's the word I was looking for. There's also obviously an iOS app for that Z1ES. You can just pull it up on any of your wireless devices and it's really neat. I, uh, and it's sound quality on that HAP Z1ES is really good too. And there's the, the side speakers that are just to the back of my back row. And there's the um, the other two Atmos speakers. Big uh, definitives in the back. They're bipolar, so they really fill the back of the room with sound. If you're sitting at these bar seats, it might be a little bit much, but there's not going to be many times where I actually have people sitting back here. And when they do, I could probably just dial those big speakers in the back down a little bit. There's my third Martin Logan. This is the bigger one. This is the uh, Descent I with the three tens in it. And just a uh, cabinet with some records. I have a lot more than that. I'm just kind of weeding through which ones I want to have in the room here that I'll play the most often. This room is uh, about tw a little over 28 by 14, so it's not uh, it's not the biggest dedicated room, but for my needs, it worked out fine. So with the back of my projector up there, with you know obviously the, the cam lights up in the ceiling. Hopefully, I'm holding this thing at least kind of still. So, this is, like I said, hopefully my last and final rendition of this room. I'm always looking for equipment to change out, but pretty much with everything I've got right now, and some kind of, unless some kind of new technology comes along, I'm pretty, gonna, pretty much going to have it as this for quite some time. Maybe down the road I'll look into getting a 4K projector, but for right now, I don't feel the need. So, pretty much leave it there. If you have any questions or comments, feel free. And uh, I will uh, see you guys down the road. Take care.